Julia from Fox's Blog Knits. Uh, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new here and thank you for joining me today from crazy sunny Northland in New Zealand. Um, hopefully the brightness doesn't um, get in the way. Uh, as always I include for you any show notes or links to what I've mentioned within this episode uh, such as patterns or products in the description below so make sure that you check uh, those out at the end of this video. Um, if you haven't already I'd really love it if you could subscribe uh, to my channel and remember to turn on notifications and if you enjoy this video uh, well this episode uh, please give it a like yeah <laughs> so today is my monthly check-in um, video podcast and I'll be sharing what I've been up to over the past month with you um, this will include things that I'm working on finished objects yarn additions that kind of thing so yeah let's get into it um, I have a lot of finished objects to share with you today loads I actually have heaps uh, so I have been filming some separate videos for these objects um, so just so you know during my monthly podcast I'll just go over my finished objects really lightly um, and if you're keen to know more and really get into it uh, you can watch that uh, specific video um, and if the video is ready I will link to it in the um, the little note above as well as the description below so make sure that you subscribe and turn on the bell so that you know when those are posted I kind of do them throughout the month so yeah so June uh, June is also my birthday month um, 22nd of June for those playing along at home um, I am almost right on the winter solstice in the southern hemisphere here um, which I always thought was quite cool. <laughs> I um, I really got on a roll with making sweaters in the last month and it's totally crazy to think that one of these I actually made in just eight days. Um, but I guess when uh, you find your groove it kind of happens with knitting. So um, I do work full time uh, running my design business and I do really put some long hours and days into that. Um, but I guess I've had a lot of pent up creativity that needed to come out and some yarn huh <laughs> um I mainly tend to knit when I'm taking a quick break during the day so um, lunch times and stuff as I work from home um or when I'm watching tv in the evenings um so I guess that those hours can really rack up um so let me share with you the cutest finished object that I have made um and that would have to be this little cardigan and hat that I made for my new nephew Woody Bear and yes, um, that's his real name, Woody Bear, genuinely his real name, um, yeah, and I think it's so cool. Uh, Woody actually lives over in Brighton in the UK with my little brother and his fiance Lauren, his doting parents, and Woody will be turning one this October, um, and I still haven't been able to meet him yet, aside from COVID and everything, um, yeah, it's such a shame. So. Instead of meeting him and giving him cuddles, I will lavish him in knitted goods. So, yeah, he has such a fantastic mum, and um, they're about to welcome their second little boy as well this November. And I really wanted to knit something for the new baby, um, but I also wanted to make something that would last and that Woody could wear, and then his little brother could wear as they, you know, it's the northern winter and they'll be going into winter at the same time, being. 11 months apart so technically I actually made this in late May but we'll sneak it into this vlog and no one will know. So the pattern um, for this one is Ellen's Cardigan by Petite Knit um, and I left out the pockets that she'd designed in there as the yarn I used was 100% non superwash merino um, and the pockets would just take ages to dry especially in a UK winter. The yarn is absolutely beautiful, it's by New Zealand luxury brand um, Perium and it's all made and woven right here in New Zealand and they've got the most beautiful colours that are all nature inspired. Um, this particular colour is called ochre and it's um, an 8 ply and it's just absolutely beautiful, I love it, it's delicious. Um, yeah, so. 
Lauren, my soon-to-be sister-in-law, she's really, really, she's really cool. We're the same age. And um, she has a very modern and eclectic taste. So when I sent her a photo of the colours that I had picked up, um, she absolutely loved them. So purple is her favourite colour and I added a touch to this little cardigan here in the stripe. Um, at the time I made this we weren't actually sure whether the new baby was going to be a boy or a girl so I really wanted it to work either way and so I added an additional stripe to the pattern just to pad out the wool um, that I had as I really wasn't sure that I would have enough to finish this project but in the end I just used one skein for the cardigan and the hat um, in addition to the uh, stash yarn for my stripes. The size for this one was 12 to 18 months so it will definitely get a lot of wear, hopefully, um, yeah. And yeah, what else? Um, the hat that I made, um, I used every little scrap of yarn for that hat. Um, it was super, super cute. The pattern that I used is the Basic Beanie and it's uh, free on Ravelry and I've added a link below um, if you'd like to have a go at this one. It uh, goes from baby sizes to adults. So, it's a really great pattern to tuck away and this set actually only took me four days of evening knitting so super fast and super super fun uh, this was my first ever raglan style sweater that i've made too uh, which i think it was great to learn that type of uh, uh you know on a small scale so yeah so learning those skills um leads me into my next um finished project which is another petite knit and it is the balloon sweater, which I have here, and I'll show you some better footage of it. Um, I'm completely in love with this sweater. Um, I was a little daunted at first to make this, as the pattern difficulty on her website was a 5 out of 5. And it was a little scary, so I actually asked on the Ravelry comments if it would be too hard for me to make this. And uh, she responded really, really quickly, saying that um, if I followed the pattern closely and took my time, then I would hopefully be totally fine. And of course I was. And it was just a case of, you know, looking at the pattern and, you know, being sensible. So like any pattern that I choose, I always try and choose something where I'm only creating um, one new technique that I haven't learned before. And this one was German short rows. And those were really easy um yeah but i love everything about that sweater um the drop shoulder the balloon sleeves the slightly cropped waist and that positive ease fit it's just the right amount for me and um finishing it and creating it with the most beautiful yarn combination was yeah it was a definite definite winner for me um yeah i've been wearing it heaps and it's been the perfect weight for a new zealand winter um, and I love that I'm already thinking about making another one so I must have really enjoyed making it it just works really well and it's a really really good style so this sweater took me just over two weeks to complete and um, I'll be doing its own finished video uh, finished object video soon I just have to edit it and put it together so watch this space and if you subscribe to my channel then you'll be first in to know um, yeah, and if you've watched my previous video, you'll know that I completed the Camulus Blouse, um, another pattern by Petite Knit. Um, I was kind of on a roll um, with her patterns. <laughs> I guess it's like that when you find a designer that you really like, you, um, you kind of just want to devour all of their work and create everything when you love how they're written and what they're making. So. This sweater was a total dream to knit and I finished, this is the sweater I actually finished in 8 days and I have worn it so so much, it is the perfect weight for a New Zealand winter at the moment um, in Northland, it's not particularly cold up here, as you can see it's incredibly sunny today and I live in a ridiculously hot house so yeah. The I-cord bind off was a new technique for me and I really liked this result. Um, it was a little bit different to do. The sweater is the perfect combination of slouchy and roomy and with that beautiful alpaca and silk blend it really feels luxurious and special. Plus adding a little bit of colour to my wardrobe was pretty welcome. The blue is such a beautiful dusky blue and it goes with so much of what I wear already um, which is mainly neutrals with a whole heap of black. 
which is probably quite boring, but oh well. Um, so if you like this pattern, be sure to watch my video, um, my finished object podcast, which I go into it in a lot more depth. Actually, on that, all my finished pattern videos include details about the yarn, any modifications that I've done, techniques that were used, the blocking techniques I've done, um, as well as a review on the pattern itself. Um, they're really, really detailed, and so they're really good to watch if you're working on or planning to work on something that I've made. Um, yeah. So lastly, um, yeah, I did actually make three adult-sized sweaters during the month of June, and this is one that I made for my 14-year-old daughter, Grace. Um, Grace is such a stylish little lady, and she has a very confident sense of style. Uh, it's very authentic and I don't know she always puts together such great outfits so it was really cool to be able to make something to add to her wardrobe especially something handmade um, you know when kids kind of aren't necessarily into that kind of thing so this is another petite knit design the no frills sweater incredibly popular um, I actually tried to teach Grace to knit over the level 4 lockdown we had here in New Zealand back in March and April of this year and you'd be pleased to know that she picked it up really really well and I was incredibly proud but it just she just wasn't into it and um, but she's really grasped on grasped onto cross stitch and embroidery so it's something crafty and she did let me make her a sweater of course and I gladly obliged. This is for her birthday which is coming up in August and um, speaking of making things for people um, my partner still won't let me make him anything yet um, but we'll see I'll get some hand knits onto him one way or another I think. Um, I think he's crazy but anyway I digress. <laughs> so the no frill sweater was super fun knit and really easy going um, with a raglan sleeve. I modified it a little by adding um, some length to the body as uh, Grace is really tall, she's taller than me. And after seeing my balloon sweater, she really, really wanted a balloon style sleeve. So rather than creating a full on balloon sleeve and I did some of the decreases um, from the petite knit pattern and then after doing just a couple, I knitted the whole way to the end of the sleeve um, to when it needed to be there and just did the one by one rib and it just created a slightly fuller sleeve. Um, again, I'll do a full finished object video which you can watch um, in much more detail on these modifications and all the other things that I did to make this beautiful jumper. The yarn is so much fun with this confetti spot throughout it. It is a four ply fingering weight that is 80% wool and 20% nylon blended yarn and held together double with a lace weight mohair. Um, the mohair I found was a little more scratchy than the alpaca I've been using but after a after a full wet block and um, adding a little bit of my expensive Kevin Murphy conditioner it turned out beautifully soft um, and so it should that conditioner is so expensive. So anyway, three sweaters finished in June. I'm really, really happy with that and um, I really have no intention of slowing down. All going well, I should say. So whoops, what I'm up to and what I'm working on. Um, so this is what I have on at the moment. I'll just pull it out of my bag. This is or will be the Magnolia, well, a Magnolia sweater. Um, I'm the kind of knitter that only has one project on the go at any given time. Even though I could really easily do more, there's so much I want to make. It does help to keep me motivated to finish them as I keep wanting to get to the next one um, and stops me from having projects kind of hanging around gathering dust. So this Magnolia sweater is by Danish designer Camilla Vad, but I'm not sorry. I don't actually know a lot about her as um, her website is on hiatus and I wanted to research. Um, but I can tell you that she has beautiful designs on Ravelry and I've had my eye on this one for a while. I'll be um, create. it'll be my first go at creating lace. Um, I do think I've already stuffed up the collar. It's meant to be a twisted rib but I still like it. Um, and as you'll notice the yarn that I'm using is the same yarn combination that I made with my balloon sweater. Um, 
It is a New Zealand made 100% three ply merino from Wild Earth Yarns in Christchurch. And this yarn isn't dyed at all and it's completely in its natural state. And when held double with the alpaca, it is just so beautiful. And with that, yeah, that alpaca silk blend, um, it creates a beautiful champagne colored cream and that really, really suits me. So I'm really excited to see where this goes and how it turns out with the lace around the body and the sleeves. And um, so far it's been fun, but I'm in stock in it land and increasing and when I get to the lace stage I'm really excited to, to give that a go and learn a new skill so that'll be fun so adding to the stash I've been very controlled and over the past month I've really only tried to add yarn for specific projects that I want to make which I know can be quite laughable um, and there has been the occasional I must have that yarn and this um, some of these some of these are that. So the first one is Fiber Spates Onyx and this of course is the same kind. It's a beautiful rich black and I will be pairing oh sorry, can't even get this working. It's too dark. I'll be pairing this with uh, Debbie Bliss uh, Rialto 4 ply. It's a soft 100 percent merino. And I've got that coming from uh, order over in the UK and because of the global situation at the moment everything is taking so much longer to arrive but they are coming and I will be making something with this help with that watch this space um, and of course as my favorite fluffy yarn I also picked up some of their blush colorway to work with which I absolutely can't wait to use there we go um, I love I love all their colors they're so beautiful um, yeah I also purchased a skein of yarn by a New Zealand dyer called Inky Fingers yarn um, and this is her color ghost moth it is an 80% merino and 20% nylon blend um, and it's so soft and lovely and bluey and gray and I have no idea what I'm gonna make with this but it will be it will be amazing um, it's 400 meters, so I'm thinking I might do a vest with the leftover white mohair from Grace's No Frills sweater, so we'll see. And she included this really cute little mini skein for me, which was so nice, and it's such a cute color, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to have to make something with that as well. And in late May, I also purchased three skeins of my favorite Perium yarn, um, right here in New Zealand that I have mentioned. Um, it's uh, Perium. Uh, the Perium are a luxury merino brand from Queenstown, and they're family-owned and led by fashion designer Christina Perium. Uh, they have the most stunningly smooth and soft um, eight and four ply merino that they sell, as well as patterns and beautiful products that are made from their merino. And what else? What else has been happening? So, well, I set up this channel, and um, I'm pretty sure that's probably. A massive thing to have done it's been a huge amount of um, learning so but alongside that um, with all my regular design work it's been really great to actually get back into creating and sharing my work again as a designer um, my work life post COVID lockdown um, has been picking up again which is really fantastic as I know a lot of other people have been in a worse off place and um, yeah, as much as I love being at home with everybody that I love and care about, generating work and cre being creative again has been really, really welcome. Um, we're still making a lot of home cooked food and we're taking the dog for walks and I've been exploring more with the fiber arts. Uh, specifically, I've been actually looking into dyeing some of my own yarn with natural dyes. Just for myself, I might add, I do not want to start dyeing yarns and selling them. I would rather dye yarns that other people have made and I just get to make stuff with them and support their industry. So I purchased some more Naked Yarn from, is that what you call it, Naked Yarn? Anyway, I'm going to call it Naked Yarn from Wild Earth Yarns and I thought that I would give it a try with Avocado. Um, the dusky pink tones that I've seen from other people look really, really nice and I have had my eye on making the balloon cardigan by Petite Knit and combining it with my blush Fiber Spates Alpaca. So I'm thinking that that would be 
an absolutely beautiful combination and wrapping myself up in something pretty like that would feel absolutely amazing so patterns to make things on my to-do list well things that I'd like to do so yeah I guess what's on the make list um balloon cardigan definitely on the next on the needles after my magnolia sweater um I think I just had to have a break from petite knits if not for me for you guys so I'd really love to make a vest out of that Inky Fingers yarn and I've been looking at the Sega vest by I think it's my Fleuring um another Danish designer um who's also an art director just like me um and I think I have a thing for Danish patterns and designers but I'll link it below and you can have a look and see what you think um I'm also keen to have a go at making some socks so if you have any easy intermediate patterns that you think that I might like um let me know in the comments and send me a link if you have otherwise just let me know the pattern name and I'll find it um actually speaking of that one of my very very first design jobs coming out of uni was for blending knits um, she's a designer called Belinda 2 and I did two books for her so first book was a sock making book and second was socks and other things and I did the design and layout of both of those books so I should really dig those out and have a look in there because her patterns were really really nice um, and I have so much of the confetti yarn left over from Grace's sweater that I think they'd be perfect for socks given it's the um, a wool and nylon blend it's not usually something that I would go for but I'm actually really glad that I did in this instance because it has a double usage within my stash and it was pretty cute so yeah plenty plenty to make over the next four weeks and August is right around the corner and I better get a move on with that so and it's Grace's birthday on the 8th so I can do that anyway we'll talk about that later um, so yeah let me know in the comments if you're planning on making anything that I have mentioned or maybe maybe one of these you've made already I'd love to know and I'd love to see um, I'm always keen to see what people are creating um yeah so thanks for being with me here again today i really hope that you've enjoyed this episode please make sure you give it a like and subscribe to my channel turning on the bell if you haven't already and you can tune in for the next episode of fox's blog knits we'll see you again soon bye